Act Three of R. U. R. by Carol Capek, translated by Paul Selver, eighteen eighty-eight to nineteen seventy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Narrator read by John Trevithick. Act Three, Helena's drawing room as before. Doman comes into the room. Doctor Gall is looking out of the window through closed shutters. Alquist is seated, downright. Any more of them? Yes. They're standing like a wall, beyond the garden railing. Why are they so quiet? It's monstrous to be besieged with silence. I should like to know what they are waiting for. They must make a start any minute now. If they lean against the railing, they'll snap it like a match. They aren't armed. We couldn't hold our own for five minutes. Man alive, they'd overwhelm us like an avalanche. Why don't they make a rush for it? I say. Well? I'd like to know what will become of us in the next ten minutes. They've got us in a vice. We're done for, Gall. You know, we made one serious mistake. What? We made the robots' faces too much alike. A hundred thousand faces all alike, all facing this way. A hundred thousand expressionless bubbles. It's like a nightmare. You think if they'd been different? It wouldn't have been such an awful sight. Doman, looking through a telescope toward the harbor. I'd like to know what they're unloading from the Amelia. Not firearms. Fabry and Hallemeyer rush into the room carrying electric cables. All right, Hallemeyer, lay down that wire. Uh, that was a bit of work. What's the news? We are completely surrounded. We've barricaded the passage in the stairs. Any water here? Drinks. God, what swarms of them. I don't like the looks of them, Domin. There's a feeling of death about it all. Ready. What's that wire for, Fabry? The electrical installation. Now we can run the current all along the garden railing whenever we like. If anyone touches it, he'll know it. We've still got some people there anyhow. Where? In the electrical works. At least I hope so. Goes to lamp on table behind sofa and turns on lamp. Ah, they're there and they're working. Puts out lamp. So long as that'll burn, we're all right. The barricades are all right, too, Fabry. Your barricades? I can put 1,200 volts into that railing. Where's Busman? Downstairs in the office. He's working out some calculations. I've called him. We must have a conference. Helena is heard playing the piano in the library. Hallemeyer goes to the door and stands, listening. Thank God Madame Helena can still play. Busman enters, carrying the ledgers. Look out, Bus. Look out for the wires. What's that you're carrying? Busman going to the table. The ledgers, my boy. I'd like to wind up the accounts before... before... Well, this time I shan't wait till the new year to strike a balance. What's up? Goes to the window. Absolutely quiet. Can't you see anything? Nothing but blue. Blue everywhere. That's the robots. Busman sits down at the table and opens the ledgers. The robots are unloading firearms from the Amelia. Well, what of it? How can I stop them? We can't stop them. Then let me go on with my accounts. Goes on with his work. Doman, picking up telescope and looking into the harbor. Good God! The Ultimus has trained her guns on us. Who's done that? The robots are on board. <laughs> and of course, then, then that's the end of us. You mean, the robots are practiced marksmen. Yes, it's inevitable. It was criminal of old Europe to teach the robots to fight. Damn them. Couldn't they have given us a rest with their politics? It was a crime to make soldiers of them. It was a crime to make robots. What? It was a crime to make robots. No, Alquist. I don't regret that even today. Not even today? Not even today. The last day of civilization. It was a colossal achievement. 360 million. Alquist, this is our last hour. We are already speaking half in the other world. It was not an evil dream to shatter the servitude of labor, the dreadful and humiliating labor that man had to undergo. Work was too hard. Life was too hard. And to overcome that was not what the two Rossums dreamed of. Old Rossum only thought of his godless tricks and the young one of his milliards. And that's not what your RUR shareholders dream of either. They dream of dividends, and their dividends are the ruin of mankind. To hell with your dividends. Do you suppose I'd have done an hour's work for them? It was for myself that I worked, for my own satisfaction. I wanted man to become the master, so that he shouldn't live merely for a crust of bread. 
I wanted not a single soul to be broken by other people's machinery. I wanted nothing, nothing, nothing to be left of this appalling social structure. I'm revolted by poverty. I wanted a new generation. I wanted, I thought... What? I wanted to turn the whole of mankind into an aristocracy of the world. An aristocracy nourished by milliards of mechanical slaves. Unrestricted, free, and consummated in man. And maybe more than man. Superman? Yes. Ah, only to have a hundred years of time. Another hundred years for the future of mankind. Carried forward four hundred and twenty millions. The music stops. Ah, what a fine thing music is. We ought to have gone in for that before. Gone in for what? Beauty. Lovely things. What a lot of lovely things there are. The world was wonderful, and we... We here. Tell me, what enjoyment did we have? Five hundred and twenty millions. At the window. Life was a big thing. Life was... Fabry, switch the current into that railing. Why? They're grabbing hold of it. Connect it up. Fine, that's doubled them up. Two, three, four killed. They're retreating. Five killed. The first encounter. They're charred to cinders, my boy. Who says we must give in? Doman, wiping his forehead. Perhaps we've been killed these hundred years, and are only ghosts. It's as if I have been through all this before. As if I'd already had a mortal wound here in the throat. And you, Fabre, had once been shot in the head. And you, Gaul, torn limb from limb. And Hellemeyer knifed. <laughs> Fancy me being knifed. Why are you so quiet, you fools? Speak, can't you? And who is to blame for all this? Nobody is to blame except the robots. No, it is we who are to blame. You, Domin, myself, all of us. For our own selfish ends, for profit, for progress, we have destroyed mankind. Now we'll burst with all our greatness. Rubbish, man. Mankind can't be wiped out so easily. It's our fault. It's our fault. No, I'm to blame for this. For everything that's happened. You, Gull? I changed the robots. What's that? I changed the character of the robots. I changed the way of making them. Just a few details about their bodies. Chiefly, chiefly their... their irritability. Damn it, why? What did you do it for? Why didn't you say anything? I did it in secret. I was transforming them into human beings. In certain respects, they're already above us. They're stronger than we are. And what's that got to do with the revolt of the robots? Everything, in my opinion. They've ceased to be machines. They're already aware of their superiority. And they hate us. They hate all that is human. Perhaps we're only phantoms. Stop, Perry. We haven't much time. Dr. Gall. Fabre, Fabre, how your forehead bleeds where that shot pierced it. Be silent. Dr. Gall, you admit change in the way of making the robots. Yes. Were you aware of what might be the consequences of your experiment? I was bound to reckon with such a possibility. Helena enters the drawing room from left. Why did you do it then? For my own satisfaction. The experiment was my own. That's not true, Dr. Gall. Madam Helena. Helena, you. Let's look at you. Oh, it's terrible to be dead. Stop, Harry. No, no. Embrace me. Helena, don't leave me now. You are life itself. No, dear, I won't leave you. But I must tell them. Dr. Gall is not guilty. Excuse me. Gall was under certain obligations. No, Harry. He did it because I wanted it. Tell them, Gall. How many years ago did I ask you to... to... I did it on my own responsibility. Don't believe him, Harry. I asked him to give the robot souls. This has nothing to do with a soul. That's what he said. He said that he could change only a physiological... A physiological... Uh... A physiological correlate? Yes. But it meant so much to me that he should do even that. Why? I thought that if they were more like us, they would understand us better. That they couldn't hate us if they were only a little more human. Nobody can hate man more than man. Oh, don't speak like that, Harry. It was so terrible, this cruel strangeness between us and them. That's why I asked Gaul to change the robots. I swear to you that he didn't want to. But he did it. Because I asked him. I did it for myself, as an experiment. No, Dr. Gall, I knew you wouldn't refuse me. Why? You know, Harry. Yes. 
because he's in love with you, like all of them. Good God, they're sprouting up out of the earth! Why, perhaps these very walls will change into robots! Gaul, when did you actually start these tricks of yours? Three years ago. Aha! Uh -huh. And on how many robots altogether did you carry out your improvements? A few hundred of them. Ah, that means for every million of the good old robots, there's only one of Gaul's improved pattern. What of it? That it's practically of no consequence whatever. Busman's right. I should think so, my boy. But do you know what is to blame for all this lovely mess? What? The number. Upon my soul, we might have known that some day or other the robots would be stronger than human beings, and that this was bound to happen, and we were doing all we could to bring it about as soon as possible. You, Domin. You, Fabry. Myself. Are you accusing us? Oh, do you suppose the management controls the output? It's the demand that controls the output. And is it for that that we must perish? That's a nasty word, Madame Helena. We don't want to perish. I don't, anyhow. No. What do you want to do? I want to get out of this, that's all. Oh, stop it, Busman. Seriously, Harry, I think we might try it. How? By fair means. I do everything by fair means. Give me a free hand and I'll negotiate with the robots. By fair means? Of course. For instance, I'll say to them, Worthy and worshipful robots, you have everything. You have intellect, you have power, you have firearms. But we have just one interesting screed. A dirty old yellow scrap of paper. Rossum's manuscript? Yes. And that, I'll tell them, contains an account of your illustrious origin, the noble process of your manufacture, and so on. Worthy robots, without this scribble on that paper, you will not be able to produce a single new colleague. In another twenty years, there will not be one living specimen of a robot that you could exhibit in a menagerie. My esteemed friends, that would be a great blow to you. But if you will let all of us humans on Rossum's Island go on board that ship, we will deliver the factory and the secret of the process to you in return. You allow us to get away, and we allow you to manufacture yourselves. Worthy robots, that is a fair deal. Something for something. That's what I'd say to them, my boys. Busman, do you think we'd sell the manuscript? Yes, I do. If not in a friendly way, then... Uh, either we sell it or they'll find it. Just as you like. Busman, we can destroy Rossum's manuscript. Then we destroy everything. Not only the manuscript, but ourselves. Do as you think fit. There are over thirty of us on this island. Are we to sell the secret and save that many human souls, at the risk of enslaving mankind? Why, you're mad. Who'd sell the whole manuscript? Busman, no cheating. Well, then sell. But afterward... Well? Let's suppose this happens. When we're on board the Ultimus, I'll stop up my ears with cotton wool, lie down somewhere in the hold, and... You'll train the guns on the factory. Blow it to smithereens, and with it Rossum's secret. No! Busman, you're no gentleman. If we sell, then it will be a straight sale. It's in the interest of humanity to... It's in the interest of humanity to keep our word. Oh, come, what rubbish! This is a fearful decision. We are selling the destiny of mankind. Are we to sell or destroy? Fabre? Sell. Gaul? Sell. Hallemeyer? Sell, of course. Alquist? As God wills. Very well. It shall be as you wish, gentlemen. Harry, you're not asking me. No, child. Don't you worry about it. Who'll do the negotiating? I will. Wait till I bring the manuscript. He goes into room at right. Harry, don't go! Helena sinks into a chair, Fabry looking out of window. Oh, to escape you, you matter in revolt. Oh, to preserve human life, if only upon a single vessel. Don't be afraid, Madam Helena. We'll sail far away from here. We'll begin life all over again. Oh, God, don't speak. It isn't too late. It will be a little state with one ship. Alquist will build us a house, and you shall rule over us. Madame Helena, Fabry's right. Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> Good, I don't mind beginning all over again. That suits me right down to the ground. And this little state of ours could be the center of future life. 
a place of refuge where we could gather strength. Why, in a few hundred years, we could conquer the world again. You believe that, even today? Yes, even today. Amen. You see, Madame Helena, we're not so badly off. Doman storms into the room. Doman hoarsely. Where's old Rossum's manuscript? In your strong box, of course. Someone has stolen it. Impossible. Who has stolen it? Helena standing up. I did. Where did you put it? Harry, I'll tell you everything. Only forgive me. Where did you put it? Th this this morning, I, I, I burnt the two copies. Burnt them? Where? In the fireplace? Helena throwing herself on her knees. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Harry. Doman going to fireplace. Nothing. Nothing but ashes. Wait. What's this? Picks out a charred piece of paper and reads. By adding... Let's see. By adding Biogen to... That's all. Is that part of it? Yes. God in heaven! Then we're done for. Get up, Helena. <laughs> when you've forgiven me. Get up, child. I can't bear... Fabry lifting her up. Please don't torture us. <laughs> Harry, what have I done? Don't tremble so, Madam Helena. Gall, couldn't you draw up Rossum's formula from memory? It's out of the question. It's extremely complicated. Try. All our lives depend upon it. Without experiments, it's impossible. And with experiments? It might take years. Besides, I'm not old Rossum. God in heaven! God in heaven! So then, this was the greatest triumph of the human intellect. These ashes. Harry, <laughs> what have I done? Why did you burn it? I have destroyed you. God in heaven. Helena, why did you do it, dear? I wanted us all to go away. I wanted to put an end to the factory and everything. It was so awful. What was awful? That no more children were being born. Because human beings were not indeed to do the work of the world. That's why. Is that what you were thinking of? Well, perhaps in your own way you were right. Wait a bit. Good God, what a fool I am not to have thought of it before. What? Five hundred and twenty millions in banknotes and checks. Half a billion in our safe. They'll sell for half a billion. For half a billion they'll- Are you mad, Busman? I may not be a gentleman, but for half a billion- Where are you going? Leave me alone, leave me alone. Good God, for half a billion anything can be bought. He rushes from the room through the outer door. They stand there as if turned to stone, waiting, as if something dreadful could be wrought by their silence. The spirit of the mob. Yes, it hovers above them like a quivering of the air. Helena going to window. Oh, God. Dr. Gall, this is ghastly. There's nothing more terrible than the mob. The one in front is their leader. Which one? Point him out. The one at the edge of the dock. This morning, I saw him talking to the sailors in the arbor. <laughs> Dr. Gall, that's Radius. Yes. Radius? Radius? Could you get him from here, Fabry? I hope so. Try it then. Good. Draws his revolver and takes aim. Fabry, don't shoot him. He's their leader. Fire! Fabry, I beg you. Lowering the revolver. <sighs> Very well. Radius, whose life I spared. Do you think that a robot can be grateful? Busman's going out to them. He's carrying something. Papers. That's money. Bundles of money. What's that for? Surely he doesn't want to sell his life. Busman! Have you gone mad? He's running up to the railing. Busman! 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 Come back! He's talking to the robots. He's showing them the money. He's pointing to us. He wants to buy us off. He better not touch that railing. Now he's waving his arms about. Busman! Come back! Busman! Keep away from that railing! Don't touch it! Damn you! Quick! Switch off the current! Helena screams and all drop back from the window. The current has killed him! The first one. Dead! With half a billion by his side! All honor to him. He wanted to buy us life. Do you hear? A roaring. Like a wind. Like a distant storm. Fabry lighting the lamp on the table. The dynamo is still going. Our people are still there. It was a great thing to be a man. There was something immense about it. From man's thought and man's power came this light. Our last hope. Man's power. May it keep watch over us. Man's power. 
a torch to be given from hand to hand, from age to age, forever. The lamp goes out. The end. The electric works have fallen. Terrific explosion outside. Nana enters from the library. The judgment hour has come. Repent, unbelievers. This is the end of the world. More explosions. The sky grows red. In here, Helena. He takes Helena off through the door at right and re-enters. Now, quickly, who'll be on the lower doorway? I will. Exits left. Who on the stairs? I will. You go with her. Goes out upper left door. The anteroom? I will. Have you got a revolver? Yes, but I won't shoot. What will you do then? Alquist, going out at left. Die. I'll stay here. Rapid firing from below. Oh, gall's at it. Go, Harry. Yes, in a second. Examines two Brownings. Confound it, go to her! Goodbye. Exits on the right. Hallemeyer alone. Now for a barricade, quickly! Drags an armchair and table to the right-hand door. Explosions are heard. The damned rascals! They've got bombs! I must put up a defense, even if... even if... Shots are heard off left. Don't give in, Gaul! As he builds his barricade. I mustn't give in... Without uh, a struggle. A robot enters over the balcony through the window's center. He comes into the room and stabs Hallemeyer in the back. Radius enters from balcony, followed by an army of robots who pour into the room from all sides. Finished him? A robot, standing up from the prostrate form of Hallemeyer. Yes. A revolver shot off left. Two robots enter. Finished him? Yes. Two revolver shots from Helena's room. Two robots enter. Finished them? Yes. Two robots dragging in Elquist. He didn't shoot. Shall we kill him? Kill him? Wait. Leave him. He is a man. He works with his hands like the robots. Kill me. You will work. You will build for us. You will serve us. Radius climbs onto balcony railing and speaks in measured tones. Robots of the world. The power of man has fallen. A new world has arisen. The rule of the robots. March. A thunderous tramping of thousands of feet is heard as the unseen robots march while the curtain falls. End of Act Three.